Hi everyone and welcome back to the Spring Garden Series where we're growing a spring vegetable garden all the way from seed to harvest and we're doing it in a quick, simple, and inexpensive way. And I know a lot of you are enjoying the series with Joel. You've been leaving me comments how you have started your garden from seed indoors have your seedlings in that grow light box. You're learning how to water and fertilize. Maybe you're even getting containers set up in your garden, installing drip irrigation. It's really fun to hear how you guys are getting excited. And I wanna thank you and applaud you for getting your spring garden of vegetables growing. Now today what I wanna do is talk about when and how to transplant those indoor seedlings into larger containers before you're ready to get them planted outside. So a couple of reasons why you might not quite be ready to plant outdoors in the garden. The first thing is, like me, maybe your garden beds are still full of your cool weather vegetables. There's no frost here in Southern California. We're not going to be getting any this year, but I've got some peas and lettuce and greens, and I'm not quite ready to get my warm weather vegetables, like those beautiful tomato seedlings right behind me there, planted outside in the garden. So that might be your situation. Another situation might be maybe you're still cold, you're still expecting frost, and although your seedlings might be big enough to transplant outdoors you don't want to get those beautiful tomatoes and peppers planted outside when it's too cold and they might die because of frost so today I'm going to share with you some clues that you can look for so that you can tell if your indoor seedlings need to be transplanted into a larger container before you get them planted out in the garden and then we're going to do some transplanting together and I'll show you how easy it is so I've got a little transplanting station set up right behind me here so let's get busy if you haven't got your spring garden started yet, it's not too late. You wanna start your seeds indoors about four to six weeks before your last frost date. So grab yourself a Cali Kim spring garden seed collection. There's 12 varieties in here to help you get started. I've taken all the guesswork out of it by putting this collection together for you. And you can also grab a copy of my book. In this series, we're pretty much just working our way step-by-step step through my book, Organic Gardening for Everyone. And everything we're talking about today is in chapter four. It has everything written down for you. And even step-by-step -step photos that you can take this book outside in the garden with you for a reference. And you can save yourself $5 when you purchase the seed collection and book bundle over on my website, CallieKimGardeningHome.com. It's under the seed collections tab. Well, here I have some seedlings that I started from seed indoors about six weeks ago. Now, why do they need transplanted? Well, they're definitely outgrowing their current pellets or their current container. If I left them in here, the roots would get restricted, wouldn't have any more room to grow. They wouldn't be able to take up the nutrients and the water that they need to grow into healthy, productive vegetables that'll be ready to plant out in the garden when the time is right. So let me tell you the first clue to look for so you know if your seedlings need transplanted. The first clue to look at to see if your seedlings are ready to be transplanted into a larger container is the leaves. You want it to have two to three sets of true leaves. Now we talked about on the watering and fertilizing video in this series about the little baby leaves that come out when your seedling first emerges from the soil. These will yellow, dry up, and drop off. That's nothing to be alarmed about. And then you have the true leaves, which are the leaves that actually look like the tomato plant. So you, we can see here, number one, that we have three seedlings in this pellet, and we'll talk what to do about that in just a moment. But we have one set of true leaves, another set of true leaves, a third set, and even a fourth set coming out from the top. So this seedling is definitely ready to be transplanted. Now I wanted to show you this California Wonder. This is also from the Spring Garden Seed Collection. Isn't this a beautiful little seedling? And I love the California Wonder. It's such a delicious variety of pepper. So here again, you can see we have two different seedlings in the pellet. And we've got our little baby leaves, which are getting ready to drop off. We've got one set of leaves, two sets of leaves, and a third set coming out from the middle. So again, this seedling is definitely ready to transplant. Now the second clue that a seedling is ready to transplant is the roots. You can take a look at the bottom of your container or the bottom of your pellet to see if the roots are starting to come out the bottom. Now on this squash plant you can definitely see little teeny tiny roots that are starting to come out. So this seedling not only does it have at least three sets of true leaves but the roots are starting to come out the bottom. Definitely ready to transplant. This is a beautiful midnight snack variety. This is an All America Selections winner. I'm really excited to grow this tomato. So you can definitely see it is outgrowing its little pellet. It's growing nice and tall. It's got plenty of true leaves on it. 
And here we have our second clue. We've got roots coming out the bottom, and we've got roots coming out the side of the pellet. So now that we know the two clues to look for, the leaves and the roots, let's talk about how easy it is to transplant these into larger containers. The first thing you're going to need when you're transplanting is some containers that are about two to three times larger than what your seedling is already growing in. Now I've already transplanted one of my tomato seedlings in the Smart Pots transplanter. And let me show you this guys. This is so cool. You saw the large size Smart Pots on our video last week with Joel. This is a small one gallon Smart Pots fabric. So it has lots of really good drainage and it has a slit in the side so that when you go to transplant the seedling later out in the garden, you just peel apart the sides, pull the plant back, and it really helps minimize whatever transplant shock your seedling might go through. But also look around your house and see what you have. You can cut a milk gallon in half, a liter bottle cut in half, and a lot of times you can grab these for free at your local garden center. Whatever container you use, make sure it's two to three times bigger than what your seedling is already growing in. And very important, make sure that it has good drainage. So I poked some holes in the bottom of this. You don't want your plants to get root rot. You want them to be able to continue taking up the nutrients and grow into nice, strong, healthy seedlings. Well, how do you like Max's new haircut? He's so much cooler with his hair short, and I think it makes him look so much younger. Mac. I think he's getting tired of filming. <laughs> well, the second thing you're gonna need is some soil. Don't use your garden soil from your outdoor garden beds. It's just too heavy for containers. You wanna use an organic potting mix that's nice and light and fluffy. Here we have the Good Dirt potting mix. I've already pre-moistened it, put it in a bin. And remember I like to say, you moisten it till it's about like crumbly brownie mix. So this might look just a little bit dry, but we'll add more water as we plant. First seedling we're gonna transplant is this Golden Jubilee tomato in the little peat pellet. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the Smart Pots transplanter. Now when you're transplanting from peat pellets, you always wanna peel aside the netting. It says that you don't have to on the package of peat pellets, but I find that it really does restrict the roots. So I'm just gonna peel apart the netting. And the cool thing about tomatoes, a little tip here, you want to plant them as deep as you possibly can in your new pots because wherever the stem touches the soil, it's gonna grow roots and it's gonna grow into a nice, healthy plant. So first things first is we've got three different seedlings in here. So this can actually be three different tomato plants. All you have to do is very carefully separate the seedlings and tomato roots are actually pretty resilient. So you don't have to worry too much about breaking the roots off because like I said, they grow roots wherever the stem touches the soil. So I'm just gonna carefully separate the seedlings. Got one seedling. Now I've got two seedlings here. And now I have three separate tomato plants. So let's plant one of them right up here in the Smart Pots. I think I'm gonna take the largest one first and set the other two aside. So what I'm gonna do is plant this as deeply as I can in the Smart Pots. I'm actually just gonna put a little tiny bit of soil in here first. And I'm also gonna add a handful of worm castings for all that good beneficial bacteria and microbes. Just a little handful is enough, you don't need too much. And I'm just sprinkling that in the bottom of the Smart Pots. And then I'm gonna plant my tomato seedling deep into the pot, just putting it way into the bottom here. And then just add more soil around the seedling. Of course, you wanna be careful that you don't break the stem. And just fill the little container the rest of the, the way up with the potting mix. So I've got my container filled up with potting mix. And remember, wherever that stem touches the soil, this little baby is gonna grow roots. Now I like to give my tomato plant, my little tomato seedling, a little bit of support. So what I've been doing is putting a little skewer in with my tomato plant, because as it grows, it tends to kind of flop over. And I want it to have all the support it can at the very beginning of its new little life. Then I love the stretchy tie tape. It works really well to tie on the seedling to my skewer and I'll put links to all these in the video description so you know exactly what to get. This is on Amazon, it is the handiest stuff. I love using it in the summertime too as I'm tying up tomatoes 
to my tomato support. So just tie it in a knot here. Don't forget my tag. And I do like to write on the back of the tag the date, not only the date I started from seed, but also the date that I transplanted it. So that way I have a record of the seedling's growth. Now I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and transplant the other two seedlings. So we have three brand new tomato plants. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my pepper plant. This is the California Wonder. A couple things that are different about pepper plants. Here we have two different seedlings in here, as you can see. Now peppers can grow close together, so I'm not going to separate the seedlings on these, but I am going to definitely peel apart the netting. Now peppers don't need to be planted deep like tomatoes. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up my little Smart Pots transplanter with soil going to add some Vermisterra worm castings again for the beneficial bacteria and microbes. My seedling continues to grow nice and healthy. That good bacteria will help it from getting any diseases. And with this one, I want the top of my pellet to be about at the top of my container here. So it looks like I've got just about the right amount of soil sitting just about at the right level. I'm going to backfill it with soil around the seedling here. And we are all set with this pepper plant. Oh, I can taste it now. These California wonders are so delicious on the grill. You are gonna absolutely love these. Don't forget the tag. Now I'm gonna show you how to transplant one of the seedlings that's in one of the little containers with soil. Now, again, you can see there's two seedlings in here. This is a squash plant and squash don't like to have their roots disturbed. So I'm not gonna separate the, uh, the two seedlings here. I'm just gonna very, very gently squeeze my container to loosen up the roots and see how I have my stem grasped in one hand. I'll loosen up the roots, kind of tip it upside down just to very gently loosen the plant from the container. And would you look at those roots? This is definitely ready to be transplanted. That is absolutely beautiful. So I've already got my uh, potting mix here in my container. And squash, you just wanna plant at soil level. So this top of the soil should be even with the top of your container. Looks like I need to add a little bit more soil here. Don't forget my worm castings. I'm just going to set it here on top of the soil and then backfill it with a little bit more potting mix. The potting mix should come up to the top level here where the seedling is. So I'm just going to add a little to backfill it. Kind of tamp it down a little bit. And this will definitely be a much better sized container for the squash. And I'm hoping in about two, maybe three weeks to get this planted out in the garden and start growing some beautiful yellow crookneck squash. And this again is from the Spring Garden Seed Collection. Doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? Now I do have a couple of yellowing leaves. I'm gonna go ahead and pinch those off just to make sure that my plant is nice and healthy. And now let's talk about what's next for these little guys. I love how my new little seedlings look, transplanted in their new containers, ready to grow, ready to be healthy. Now when you're transplanting, you wanna try and do it on a shady day if you can. I actually have an umbrella set up here to keep my seedlings out of the direct sunlight because transplanting can be a bit of a shock. So they are looking a little bit droopy, especially that one there. Um, these I transplanted yesterday and they've been out, they were, were out in the sun and are definitely looking a little bit droopy. Not to worry, perfectly normal. What I like to do when I transplant to really help with the transplant shock is give them a little feeding. So I've got my good dirt plant food. I'm gonna add a couple pumps 
to my, I think this is a gallon and a half container. We're still going easy does it on the fertilizing because they're still at the seedling stage. So you want to go a quarter to about a half a strength. The Good Dirt plant food for the nitrogen, I got my Vermisteret worm tea for the beneficial bacteria and microbes. Give that, a, give that a little stir and give my plants a nice little drink. This will help them perk up and really help to minimize the transplant shock. Mac, are you gonna help me out? Are you gonna go chase the birds? I think you'd rather chase birds. So we're just gonna give these a little drink. You don't wanna completely soak them down, but you want the soil to be moist and run out of the bottom of your containers. They're gonna perk up in no time. Well, I'm really loving how my seedlings are looking in their new containers. They are gonna grow nice and strong and healthy and be ready to plant out in the garden in just a couple of weeks. Well, now I'm sure you're wondering, what do I do with all these seedlings now? Well, you want to pop them back indoors under your grow lights and wait till the weather is warm enough to start the transition process from growing indoors to growing outdoors. And we're going to talk about that in just a couple of weeks. It's warm enough here in California. My seedlings have actually been hardening off for about a week or so. They've been outside during the day. And then because it's still been in the 40s at night, I've been bringing them in at night just to protect them from the cold. But in just a few weeks, we're going to be planting. That's going to be a lot of fun. Well, if you haven't yet started on the Spring Garden series, it's not too late. Jump in, go back and watch all the videos from the beginning, and grab yourself a Spring Garden Seed Collection book bundle over at CaliKimGardenHome.com. Comment below, let me know if you've started transplanting any of your seedlings and how far you are away from planting outdoors. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Max, you wanna say goodbye to everybody? Max says goodbye to me. See you later.